you know, we don't have every single piece of thing and we don't behave in the exact same way every time that our spouses want or they don't behave in the way that we want all the time. We know this. Peace is Nyla, Coach Nyla of Outstanding Personal Relationships. And I have a question for you guys. <laughs> have there ever been a time in your marriage where you just felt that you really wanted to change something about your spouse? Like if you have the opportunity, if you can wave a wand or you can snap your fingers or you can blink your eyes or whatever the case may be, that this, this thing about them would be just totally different, would be what you want it to be. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only person that there are a number of people out there who totally wish that they that they could change something about their spouse because let's face it we are not perfect that's and that's fine that's okay there're going to be things about our spouses that may get under our skin there may be things about our spouses that we may want to change there may be things about us and I'm not gonna say maybe there are things about us that our spouses want to change too. I, I would be naive to say that that's not the case because we're not perfect. You know, we don't have every single piece of thing and we don't behave in the exact same way every time that our spouses want or they don't behave in the way that we want all the time. We know this. So, of course, I'm not going to tell you, you can change your spouse. I'm not going to give you a surefire, you know, method to changing your spouse. Because if I knew that type of thing, I would be very, very wealthy. And there would be a lot of people coming, banging at my door, filling up my inboxes and all types of other stuff to get the secret sauce. However, we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to have challenges. We're supposed to, you know, have things that I guess probably get under our skin from time to time because it allows us to kind of grow and learn and adapt to different things in life as well as our marriages. So instead of worrying about changing our spouses, how about we talk about encouraging our spouses to be better thems? If that makes any sense, you know, and that's the thing. That's how we come up with those things. That's how we get the things that we want. You know, we want a loving, caring, you know, amazing spouse. A lot of times, and, and, and please don't come for me in the point where it's like, well, what about abusive spouses? What about these different things? We, we know those exist. I'm not talking about that because sometimes there be people they will there will be people in your life or people that you will encounter that you may have to cut off you may have to confront you may have to do a number of things where it's not as easy peasy lemon squeezy as these few little steps that i am going to talk about now um, when it comes to creating or not even creating but um encouraging you know your spouse and this can work for not just your spouse but you know anybody in your life that you know you want to encourage so one of the things is praise you know and i'm not talking about the worshiping type of praise but you know telling them giving them kind words letting them know that they're doing things right a lot of times we're always talking about what people are doing wrong you know we quick to criticize our spouses, what they haven't done, what they should be doing, what they used to do that they don't do anymore, all these different things. And then we wonder why they don't do the things that we like so much because resentment starts to build up. Just imagine if that happened to you, if it is happening to you, how does that make you feel? 
You don't want to go run out and do the things that a person wants you to do if they're constantly criticizing you. You don't want to constantly, you don't want to just up and run and do the things that, you know, they want you to do because when they're constantly criticizing you, you know, but when a person is encouraging you, a person is giving you praise, praise and saying that, you know what? I like when you did this thing. You did a great job on this. Oh, this food tastes so good. Or my gosh, the time when you made me these delicious cookies, man, I'm still thinking about these cookies today. Man, maybe one of these days when you got the time, maybe you can make make a batch and we could share. You know, maybe you could make us a batch or something on the lines of that. Now, a person is talking to you like that, I'm pretty sure that's like, yeah, let me make us a batch of cookies. <laughs> now they're like, you never make me anything anymore. I remember when you used to do this and now you don't do this anymore. People don't want to hear that. You know, so your spouse don't want to hear that. And I'm pretty sure you don't want to hear that. So one of the things, praise. And like I said, not the worshiping type of whatever type of praise, but, you know, giving them some kind words. And, you know, you, you just, you attract more, more good in your life when you are being kind. I mean, yeah, I sounded very corny when I said that, but yeah, as corny as that is, it's the truth. <laughs> so that's uh, one of the things. Another thing is meeting the needs of your spouse. We all have our needs. And I know I just talked about praise and things like that. And it, and I'll go into, I mean, that is pretty much kind of feeding into the love languages type of thing. Those who are not familiar with the love languages, pretty much you can um, check out um, Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages. He pretty much breaks it down, uh, what they are. And we also talk about that in our RMIC membership. We actually have training on the five love languages and you can find out more information about that at outstandingpersonalrelationships.com slash RM for relationship mastery. However, when we're feeding into the love languages, we're feeding into each other's needs and desires, each other's wants. And the more we do that, the more a person wants to be better in anything that they're doing. And when they are doing better or when they are receiving the, this, this praise or the language of, you know, love, their love language, they're more, they're more um, open to what you want them to do. Also, another point is requests, making requests instead of demands. And that's the thing where when you're giving people their needs and their wants and their desires and things, different things like that, and I'm not saying every need, every want, every desire, of course, that's just going to the extreme. But when you're feeding into those love languages and you are not being demanding of the things that you want from the person, but you're requesting some things, you're going to most likely get the things that you request. It may not be exactly when you request it, but see, that's where we have to be. We have to be patient with our spouses. That's where that love come that that love comes in. You want to be patient. You want to be understanding. You don't want to be demanding. Requests are way better than demands. Think about when a person demands you to do something. It makes you not want to do the thing. You feel like you're forced. We don't want resentment in our relationships. We don't want resentment in our marriages. So these are a few things that we can do to encourage our spouses to be better, to encourage our, encourage our spouses to do the things that we would like them to do, even when it comes to just personal things for us. You know, you want to make sure that you are feeding into those love languages, feeding into the needs and desires, you know, meeting them with requests, requesting things of them, and being very careful of not criticizing them and wondering why they're getting on a defensive if you do. When you are criticizing people, whether you believe that it's a criticism or not, you could just be, you think that it's a suggestion. But then the person gets defensive. What does that mean? 
you wonder why. What does that mean when they get defensive? Well, you're attacking them. That's what they feel. And I'm saying that from experience because there are certain triggers that I have where it's like it's an attack on me. It's an attack on my self-esteem. It's an attack on my character. And those are triggers for me, even if it's a suggestion. Even if it could be just a suggestion. So think about it this way. If you're suggesting things to your spouse and you're being met with defensiveness, find out why they're being so defensive. Like watch their triggers or watch the times they get triggered. What? And then think about what did I say that, possibly, that could have possibly triggered this? And I know... People are like, well, why do I got to figure this out? Why do? Because you want to win as a team. Because you want to succeed. You want to have loving, fulfilling, amazing, outstanding relationships. So when you do the work, the success is going to follow. And when you take the initiative to do the stuff first, your spouse will see that. And your spouse will wonder, well, why? something has changed. Why did this change? And then you would tell them why it changed or how it changed. Then they'll start seeing it and saying, you know what? This person is making an effort. This person is showing me that they really care and they love me and things like that. And you know what? I need to be doing the same. Like I said, it may not happen overnight. It's not going to happen overnight. <laughs> now, if it does for some people, that's pretty much an anomaly. But that doesn't mean that it won't happen. And as I stated before, maybe some people that may need to be confronted after all these beautiful little things are done and they're still being a certain way and it's just, it doesn't seem like there's growth going, you might be, need some confrontation. And not confrontation in the snappy, snooty type of way, but in a loving, caring way. And this is for relationships that are on the, that that is in the the space of growth not um, damaging relationships, not abusive relationships, things like that. If you're in an abusive relationship, please get help to get out. If you're in a place where you have, you're with a narcissist, please get help to get out. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about loving, caring relationships that may have felt fallen stale or things have gotten in the way of, um, excuse me, life has gotten in the way somehow and we allow life to get in the way and change our view and change our priorities when it comes to loving and caring for our spouses. I'm talking about those relationships where you can do these small little things and, and, it's, and it seems small and I'll say, I say it's small because they're easy to do. But because they're easy to do, they're easy not to do. They're easy to be put to, to the side. So yeah, I'm saying it's small because there are little things, but the big thing is making it happen over time. Doing these small things over time, being consistent with these things. So make sure you do that. Make sure you are finding out what, what, what triggers you, what triggers your spouse, and try to work through those things so you can have loving, lasting relationships. You know, make sure you are um, giving the praise. You know, make sure you are doing the kind things. You know, looking at their love languages and feeding into those love languages. And see how that goes over time. That is where you're going to start seeing these amazing, fulfilling relationships, these, um, this amazing, fulfilling marriage that was once stale, but now has gained some flavor because you did the work. Don't just think that, well, he's not doing the work, so I'm not going to do the work, or she's not doing the work, so I'm not going to do the work. You do the work, they'll see that change. And most likely, they'll start to figure out what it is or ask what it is, and they'll follow suit as well. So until next time, make sure you are growing intentionally, loving fearlessly, and connecting on a higher level every single day. And I'll see you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.
here are three ways outstanding personal relationships can help you. One is by following us on our social medias. Follow us on IG at Outstanding Relationships and on Facebook and YouTube at Outstanding Personal Relationships and make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Number two, make sure you head over to outstandingpersonalrelationships.com and subscribe to the email list. From there, you will get downloads as well as updates, any and all updates, and you also get an update on the release of our new book, Let's Talk Polygyny, Uncensored. Number three, if you are serious about polygyny relationships and really developing fulfillment and happiness, make sure you register for our Relationship Mastery Inner Circle, which is members only, which is downloads, it includes access to us live on a weekly basis. So that's at outstandingpersonalrelationships.com slash RM. We'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Peace.